Today we welcome the President and CEO of Crisis Group, Jean-Marie Guéhenot. Jean-Marie, Crisis Group today put out a, a, a plan to try and resolve the Ukraine crisis. What's new in this plan? What's the philosophy behind it? And why will it work when so many other attempts have so far not succeeded? Well, the philosophy behind it is that this is the most serious crisis since the end of the Cold War. There's no question that uh, fundamental principles of international law have been broken. It is the first time since the uh, 40s that a territory is annexed uh, by force. And that's very serious, not just for Europe, but for the whole world. Um, Russia remains a nuclear superpower. There's a serious risk of escalation uh, of war. Uh, and so for crisis group, whose core, core role, core ambition is to prevent conflict and escalation of conflict, taking a strong position, coming up with a comprehensive plan on the crisis was essential. And I would add that when I look at all the efforts uh, since the beginning of the, of the crisis. What strikes me is that they have been reactive instead of uh, proactive. Uh, President Putin is a very good uh, tactician and each time he makes a new move there is some little action that is taken but there is no vision, there is no strategy. And we thought at Crisis Group that it was very important to have that vision and that strategy, hence the plan. Crisis Group has set out 10 points that it thinks the world can use to try and develop this longer term strategy. Could you tell us which you think the most important points for the world to act on are? Well, first obviously is implementation of the Minsk agreements. And that needs to be considerably, considerably strengthened. There has to be serious monitoring of the ceasefire, of the border. Uh, if that does not, uh, is not in place, then everything else uh, is, in, is in doubt. And we know that there has been serious resistance on the part of Russia to, uh, to accept as many monitors as would be needed. We need to, to work on that, and that should be the first item of negotiation. But if you want uh, an effective negotiation, uh, you can't just have every once in a while a meeting at top level between uh, what we have seen now, which has been useful, but it's not sufficient. We have seen President Hollande, Chancellor Merkel, President Poroshenko meeting with President Putin. Uh, this is useful, but this is not continuous. This is episodical. What you need is a really continuous engagement with President Putin. So Crisis Group uh, makes a very strong proposal that there should be uh, an, an envoy, very senior envoy, former foreign minister, former head of state, appointed by the three Western permanent members of the Security Council, Germany and the European Union, to prepare the ground with uh, Putin and the presidency uh, for then in-depth negotiation, and then you can have heads of states uh, uh, coming. In this crisis, everybody has been looking at the next step. Nobody has been looking at the long term. And so long as you don't take the long view on the crisis, you're not going to, to address this. So the agenda cannot be just on uh, uh, monitoring of ceasefire. It has to be on the geostrategic position uh, of Ukraine. It has to be on a framework of long-term cooperation with Russia. Russia has its responsibilities in, in that withering away. It blocked a number of things in the OSC, but we didn't push very hard. As you say, the crisis group plan, if you look at it as a whole, is an attempt to rebalance the situation in Eastern Europe. And in a way, you're spelling out as crisis group the, um, the critical matters like whether or not Ukraine should become a member of NATO, which is, is uh, put into the long distant future, if ever, and the EU relationship is also uh, ruled out for now. These are, in a way, concessions to the Russian position. Do you, think, do you see them as such? And do you think that that's going to be enough to bring Russia into a collaborative relationship which you've just outlined? Well, first, I would, uh, we differentiate a bit between NATO and the EU. NATO was created as an alliance against Russia. Uh, it, uh, after the end of the Cold War, it evolved uh, to send signal that it was not built against Russia. Mm. But uh, we have to be honest in, uh, and have some self-awareness. From the Russian standpoint, uh, NATO will always suffer from its, uh, from its origins. Uh, the European Union should be seen in a different light. 
the European Union is a fundamental uh, in incentive for Ukraine to transform itself. And it's a big part of our plan to really insist on a strengthening of Ukrainian institutions. That crisis would not have happened in the first place if Ukraine had been a stronger country with no corruption, with functioning state institutions. And the transformation of Ukraine on that front is very much linked to the hope of joining someday the EU. So while one can close the door uh, on uh, NATO membership uh, for the foreseeable future for Ukraine, uh, one should certainly keep the door open for Ukraine joining the European uh, Union. I think for Russia uh, to, uh, to get in that discussion, uh, there has to be, they have to see that they will benefit uh, from it, obviously. And there, you have to look at where Russia is, uh, that it, it needs to diversify its economy, uh, it needs uh, um, Western uh, capital, Western technology. Uh, there is a lot that can be done uh, with, with Russia. There is a lot uh, in the economic interaction with Ukraine as a bridge uh, between uh, Russia and uh, the rest of uh, Europe. Ukraine should not be a front line. Russia may not, be, may not see that uh, today, but that is certainly the long-term interest of Russia. Is it really the case, as Crisis Group uh, argues in, in, in this uh, briefing and, and the plan that has been outlined, that this is a fundamental challenge that is really new, a fundamental challenge to the post-1945 order? We think it, we think it is. Uh, I think it's a Crisis Group as a global organization always tries to understand the, where each actor comes from. So Russia, uh, Russia's logic is to say you uh, should not be, you should not have the moral high ground, you uh, Western countries who tell us, who give us lessons on international law. They have a point but only, but they, but only a limited uh, point because one can accept uh, these Critic the, the, this criticism of, of Russia. But one cannot ignore that the annexation of Crimea is just uh, one country through force uh, annexing uh, a piece of territory of another sovereign country. If you let the legal order that was created after 1945, if you let that unravel, uh, that, will, that will reverberate throughout the, throughout the world. From Crisis Group's report, it seems that Russia is in a militarily stronger position. What do you think the Russians' interest is to actually reach the compromise that Crisis Group sets out with the West? Well, in the short term, Russia indeed is in a stronger uh, position. Uh, it has an infinitely stronger army than Ukraine, which has a very uh, we, which has weak armed forces. Uh, it is right uh, next door compared to Western uh, countries. Um, it has economic uh, leverage with the uh, gas, and the, so uh, it has a lot of assets and uh, connections within Ukraine. So it is in a in a very strong uh, position. In the long term, uh, the Russian economy has not uh, diversified. Uh, it's very much uh, dependent on exports of raw material. It's dependent on imports of uh, technology. Uh, it, if, it, if the economy begins to implode, uh, this is very dangerous uh, for, for, for Russia. You've seen already Russia we're having a military victory in Chechnya. But Chechnya at the same time is uh, not that controlled uh, by Moscow. Kadyrov uh, runs his own show. Uh, if the state structures of Russia uh, were to be uh, weakened uh, by a deepening uh, economic crisis, this is not good news for Russia. I would say it's not good news either for Western countries uh, because nobody would be in real control there and that's not a situation you want. But I think if the Russians uh, look at their long-term interest 
they will see that a cooperative relationship with uh, Europe is of the essence uh, for the transformation and uh, progress of Russia. And so there is a fundamental long-term uh, joint interest, I think. Ukraine has been, as a civilization, very close to Russia, and that's, uh, that's part of the issue. It's seen by Russian, by many Russian way as Russian, <laughs> uh, at least for parts of, uh, parts of Ukraine. If uh, Ukraine becomes a success uh, story, it, it will have an impact uh, in, in Russia. The way to look at it is that that impact actually should be seized uh, by Russia as a positive thing, not a negative one. Jean-Marie Gehenno, thank you very much. Thank you.